What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about some of my collection of novelty cameras and the reason I use the air quotes is some aren't even cameras. Uh, they're just camera shaped things. So let's start right like this one for example. This is a ceramic flask. So you have your little cork stopper here so you could fill it up with your booze. And then um, little lens shot glasses. Uh, if I could get them out of here, this must be, I would guess from the 50s. It says made in Japan. Um, yeah, so you got a couple so you and your friend could, uh, I guess, sneak around and uh, drink wherever you are. I guess it's the precursor to the cell phone flask that my mom carries. But um, yeah, kind of cool. And it's amazing. I actually Googled made in Japan ceramic camera flask. And one, the first thing that came up was the exact same one on Etsy. So it must have been you know, a fairly mass produced little item. I think I found it at an estate sale in Akron somewhere one day. And then um, the next ones are cameras. It's these cool little um, micro cameras. These are also a product from Japan. They The original run was, I think, 1939 to just around the end of the World War, um, World War II. Uh, this one is from 53 though. Uh, they're pretty cool. This is the Micro 3A, and it actually has a bunch of settings. Um, you could change the aperture, you could change the shutter speed. I think, yeah, what, 25, 50, 100 in bulb mode, and then I think it's f4.5 to f11. And it, this one still works. I mean, they're obviously little simple, fairly simple mechanisms. You have a film door on the back, so you can see how far to advance it. They make an image that's 14 by 14 millimeters, which lines up to be just basically cutting um, 35 millimeter uh, film in half. So yeah, it's kind of cool. I got this other one later, which is kind of, they became, they were a big trend, kind of died out by the end of the 50s. But this is a cheaper one. They were called Hit Cameras. Um, this is actually the brand Hit. This one doesn't really have any settings. I think just a bulb mode and regular. But um, yeah, they became known as Hit Cameras, all of them kind of by, by this model. There's tons of really cheap ones manufactured from what I've read. But the cool thing about this one is it had the nice little case, uh, but it also had the film in here. So I'll show some close-ups of this after. Um, but it's cool that it's in this box there in every state, like someone has an exposed one that they never used. And then you can see these little reels. I don't think uh, cute is a word that I use often, but they're definitely cute. And then there's a unexposed one. I don't think I'll ever mess around with trying to deal with that. Um, I don't even know where you'd get them developed. Uh, I know you can still get like those uh, Minox or you know, spy camera film. You could get that developed and maybe this fits on the, some of those. That was proprietary though, so I'm not sure. But yeah, I think, I think I found both these at flea markets and they're just, yeah, one of those cool little pieces that, you know, are unique to have. Um, let's see what else. Um, this is like a replica of a Nikon F3, but it's actually like a Zippo lighter. So I don't have any fuel in there right now, but uh, I thought this was a pretty cool one. My friend Rick gave this to me for my birthday, I believe. He, um, he a camera stop shop that he used with his friends with the owners, um, Metzger's he used to go to. One of the guys gave him this. They used to get all the little novelty stuff. Um, I have some really cool um, Leica pins uh, that are from there and a couple other little things that he's given me over the years. I think this is one of them right here. So this camera, what's it called? The O. Cohen photo film, Cohen photo film. But I actually use this on my niece and nephew. So you go like you're going to take a picture and it's actually a squirt gun. So it's a, I'm aiming it away from the camera, but you could actually change the, uh, yeah, the angle of where it squirts. So it's kind of, I remember when my niece was really a uh, little, you know, getting her with that thing. So another little fun, goofy, you know, so we got fire and uh, fire and water. This one is one my friend uh, Mike gave me, the Wonder Friend camera. Uh, he came over I'd, and dropped this off. He gave me something else cool, but whatever. So this is kind of, reminds me of the squirt gun one, but this one you put your finger here and when you go to take the picture, it fires out this little mouse uh, thing out of the lens. So just like a nice, great little prank camera to uh, scare someone with. I, I just love stuff like this. I, don't I couldn't find anything about this one online. So I tried to Google the camera name, Wonder Friend Camera, but 
It's also made in Japan, but I did not find anything. The next one I have on the table is this old Fisher Price one. I don't, I, I grew up having these. I don't, depends on how old you are, you would probably remember, remember them. I should remember to do some research on the years they were made, but I gotta guess these are 70s and 80s, right? But yeah, there's a little uh, slideshow in each one, a little story. Most of them are nursery rhyme stories. Um, and when you look through them pointing towards light, you watch the little stories, kind of cool. So they're discs, they pop out like this. And then you also have a, where the film would go, a bunch of different ones so you could watch your different stories. Then the one I have last is, it's my favorite for the story. So this is a Justice League. So what is that, Marvel? I'm not a um, big superhero guy, but uh, it would make people real mad at me with that. But uh, so yeah, uh, Rick also gave this to me. He gave it to me on my birthday again. And it was, I had a bunch of people over, uh, me and a friend had like all our parents over and everything like that and had dinner and a cookout and we had a fire. He gave this to me and I said, how does it work? And he said, I don't know, you have to try it out, but I thought maybe it really took pictures and had a limited amount, so I didn't want to, you know, mess with it then. So, you know, we were hanging out, we were drinking, everyone went home. We probably had a few beers while we were cleaning up the house and the yard and everything. And so then I looked at my girlfriend and I was like, well, why don't we try it out? And so, you know, I looked, I looked through it and I go to take the picture and <laughs> it's a picture of Superman. You just, as you take a picture, just a different, I'll do a close up of this too, a different superhero comes up. And I know that probably obviously makes sense, but at the time and at the state we were in, we were actually falling about the place, just absolutely cracking up. You know, <laughs> she's posing, she's smiling, and then Superman, I, I really did lose it. Um, I might've said lastly, but it's not lastly because I've actually just taken a picture of you with my um, spy camera set up here. So this one's really cool. My friend Aaron gave me this. And it's more than just a camera. It's a whole spy kit that was came out in 1965, I believe, like something that was made popular by like the James Bond movies. But so what it is, is there's a little box camera hidden in here and there's a cutout so you could take a picture, of, you know, without anyone knowing. It takes 127 film and, you know, seeing that like any simple box camera, it probably still works just fine. Um, 127 was hard to get for a long time because it's been discontinued for years, but um, film, for film photography project now stocks it. I think they actually roll it themselves probably. Um, but yeah, I'll put a link to that below in case you do have any old 127 cameras. So yeah, kind of a cool thing. And then here you have this, this is a trigger, which actually, you know, unrelated to the camera, but so you could fire your gun without actually opening the case. Not sure how well that would actually work. You know, you got your little bullets. This is a periscope there. I've seen online the instructions on how to set the thing up in really nice shape. They actually get decent money on eBay, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever. But yeah, that's some really unique and strange little camera things that I've collected or been given over the years. You know, people give me regular cameras too. They just know that I love them. So yeah, I'm going to have a part two of this because I have another, a few more in the collection, but till then, uh, hope everyone's staying safe and I will see you in the next video.